so there's our first run on this thing right there and that's where the axe is going to sit in here just like this so that's exactly why we needed to make that thing just a little bit longer than we actually needed a little bit wider than we actually needed it was because we know we're going to have that folded material right there where the back of that axe is so we're going to have to form that a little bit right there to get this around our head okay so we had to make that a little bit bigger just for that reason we've got to get ready to put our welt in and our welt is going to go here now thinking about this we're double stitching coming back if we start at the bottom of the welt and go up we're going to come back anyway that gives us the ability to go down here and come back and our cord will get cut right here and we won't have to cut our cord again we'll just be able to keep on sewing so what we need to do now is we need to get our welt lined up in here correctly and now we're going to punch a little bit deeper hole so it's going to be a little bit more of a hassle probably that's okay the last hole is going to be right up here at the welt probably punch that in I'm punching these holes just a little deeper this time just because I want to make sure we're I got a big enough hole on that back side of that third piece of leather. This is the corner of our welt right here. So this will be the last stitch that goes on our welt. It's probably going to pinch off to one side and that's okay. stitch is right here and that's where our handle comes through okay back to the vise now the other thing you want to remember when you're working your way around this weld is you're working with three layers of leather instead of two and that can sometimes give you fits but it's going to give you more fits going back through it the second time around than it does the first pass and this is where you might really want to get yourself a pair of needle nose pliers pull that needle through that leather just take your time none of this stuff is fast Feels rough going in. You probably didn't quite hit the hole. And if you have to, you can ream that hole out a little bit more with your awl. Don't be afraid to make adjustments along the way that you need to make. For sure. Like I said, going back through this thing a second time is where you're really going to run into your fits because now you've tightened everything up. You got three pieces of leather there you're going through. And you can't separate the layers anymore to find the holes. So it may take a little bit of tugging and pulling to get that through there, but it's just going to hold better in the long run that way. Like I said, if you're having issues finding that hole on the other side, don't be afraid to stick your awl in there and shove it through there to find that hole. It'll make that needle go through there a whole lot easier and that leather will shrink right back up. Okay, so we've made it down to the bottom of our well. 
remember we planned it that way because we knew we were going to have to come down here now we're back to two layers of leather it should be quite a bit easier to get the job done I say that and it decides it wants to be difficult. <laughs> I think it's just me having bad aim. doing on the end of this is I'm going back down I've came around to my welt again whoop around my vice there now I'm going to go back down about three stitches doubling that up just to make sure it doesn't come undone so I'm just going back down about three holes before I cut this off then I'll come down here and clip this close just like that so this is what we have now we have and we'll get this cleaned up here in a little bit we can trim some of that now if we want to but we're gonna do something else to it here a little bit later but we'll trim that welt off just a little bit right there and we can clean this up a little bit later like I said right now I just want to make sure that everything fits the belt axe fits in the pouch very very snugly and that's exactly what I want because the leather's going to stretch anyway. So I want that to fit in there nice and snug. Just like that. That's good. Now we've got to do something with our flap. So that's going to be our next project. So I'm thinking to myself, what do I want to do with this flap? And I think I want to maintain the shape of the cover with the flap. So I'm just kind of tracing that off so that can be trimmed out. And then I'm just going to trim that all the way around just like this. basically matches this now I may go ahead and round that off just a shade right there maybe just cut that corner just a touch like that there we go now we've got this now if I put a snap on here or something like that you know that's not very traditional looking at all so I'd like to just have some kind of a tie right here, a leather tie. What I may do is just take a piece of leather thong and run it through here. Think about that for just a minute. I definitely don't want to punch any holes until I'm good and ready. You 
know, the easiest thing to do would just be to punch a couple of holes right here and tie this thing down around the axe. And that would probably be the most traditional way to do it as well. Although it may not be the bushcrafty way to do it. But the thing is, if I do that and I untie it, then this is going to be attached here. It's not going to be in my way of getting the axe out. And I like that for functionality. What I don't like sometimes is how people attach things here and then bring them up through this hole. And then when I do this to get my axe out, I got to move all this mess out of my way. I don't really like that. The other thing I could do is come up through the bottom here. some type of button configuration here that this ties down onto but even then you know I think I'd rather just for traditionals traditionalism's sake I think I'd rather just come up out of here and wrap that so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark two holes right here one here and one here and punch two holes in this cover big enough to put that leather lace through and do it just like that I think that's what I'm going to do and let it hold a shot like this. I'm thinking if I take this wheel punch and just punch a hole here. And a hole here. And I just put a piece of leather backing back there. And I'll cut this kind of at an angle like that. Shove it up through this hole. I made that hole pretty small just so this would be tough to get through there on purpose this is kind of rat tailed on this end and bring this up through here like this get those ties evened up kind of like that then all I have to do is bring this down here like this and I can just tie that right off square knot like that and be done with it then I have a good axe cover that's going to protect my blade now let's kind of clean this up a little bit and we're just going to do that over at the grinder all I'm going to do with this is just kind of neaten this up a little bit on this edge just like this I always use fix and wax things like that to treat my leather with because it just protects it really 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 well and I just want to get all the edges real good make sure they're waxed in tight that's gonna be a that's gonna be a pretty good pretty good fit and axe cover for a long long time right there go one and done well folks I really appreciate you joining me out here today for this project on making an axe mask for this new 18th century belt axe I've been working on I appreciate all your views and I appreciate your support I thank you for everything you do for our school for our family and for our business I'll be back with another video as soon as I can thanks guys mm -hmm.